Welcome to the Purpose Focused Advisor, a podcast for financial planners, advisors, and RIAs looking to get the most out of yourself and your business. Join Rob Brown and Phil Calandra as they walk you through a journey that will allow you to take action in your business and your life so you can be the best that you can possibly be. Now here are your hosts, Rob and Phil. Welcome back again, everyone. This is the Purpose Focused Advisor. We're so glad you're with us. I'm Phil Calandra, and I'm with my friend and co-host, Rob Brown. Rob, it's good to be with you again. Absolutely. Um, One of my favorite parts of the week is the time (laughs) that we spend together uh, recording these uh, these podcasts. And it's fun. The last couple of weeks, it's just us. We haven't invited anybody else to uh, our party. It's been a lot of fun. So we're going to flip the switch. Uh, I'm going to sit in your seat today and you're going to sit in the guest hot seat. So I'm going to be talking to you about something that we teed up last week. If you haven't heard last week's podcast interview, like Rob mentioned, it was just he and I kind of talking about uh, my practice, my business and uh, things that I've learned and things that I'm doing and have done in the first half this year. So if you haven't listened to that, please go back and and check that one out. But we want to talk about what you can do to be very purposeful and very focused in the second half of 2024. Hard to believe we're already halfway through the year and the second half of the year is going to fly by whether you like it or not. So we wanted to kind of touch on the things that you could be doing now. And Rob, I want to ask the first question like this. You work with a lot of high-performing advisors. What are the key things that you would be pointing out, refining for them as we go into the back half of 2024, especially with this news cycle, with this kind of stress and anxiety we feel over our country right now? Yeah, yeah, there are there are some nerves right now, and it's um, it's unfortunate the way that uh, it can impact us on a day to day basis. Um, but I, I would guess part of what I would do um, with a client who is feeling that stress is make sure that we're separating out those things that they can control from those things that they can't control because we can't control the uh, the news cycle. And so as we're doing a mid-year review, um, what we're going to, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out um, their plan because each year uh, we create with our clients what we call a truest fan action plan, which really dials in those things that they aspire to accomplish during the course of a year, but also narrow that down into what actions they committed to taking during the first half of the year or during the last sprint, if we're breaking it down into, you know, shorter three month periods of time. So, so that's the first thing we do is pull out the plan and talk about where the business is not relative just to the numbers, to where the AUM is or where the recurring revenues are, but where are you relative to what you said that you wanted to accomplish um, and are you on track for being able to accomplish the bigger things that you've laid out for the rest of the year? So that's always the first step in thinking about um, doing a mid-year check-in. Yeah, that's so good, Rob. And one of the things that I heard you say is so important. There are things we can control and the, there are things we can never control And when you look at the truest fan action plan, I know I've done this for years with you. Um, The third word in that is action. Why is it though? Maybe it's, maybe you have an answer. Maybe we don't have the answer today. Why is it that we're all so reactionary instead of actionary? Because that's what I pick up when I hear you know, when I look at my truest fan action plan that we do, whenever I'm reactive, I'm becoming human. That's, that's I guess, natural. But how do you get your, how do you bring people back 
to being action focused because that's the end that's the opposite of uh you know you can't control any everything how do you do that yeah well i i think it come that that's why the process is so important um is i think i think the the way that you do that is that you have a process that puts the actions in front of you so you can see every day what it is that is you've judged as being the most important thing for you to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. You see that every day, and then you're able to bounce up against that, the, um, the, the competition to your actions, the things that you said that you're committed to, because there is lots of competition. You know, you've got your text messages on your phone. You've got the emails coming in. Maybe you've got some phone calls going on. Maybe your uh, a bright, shiny object has come your way that's telling you that you can revol revolutionize your business. I was reading about the the seven second coffee diet yesterday. I was like. <laughs> You know, and I, and I just caught myself like wanting to know what you put in your coffee to make this seven second secret. Um, but there's <laughs> so many, there's so many distractions. So when you have an action plan um, and you look at it every day and you, and as you're planning your day, you're saying, am I working, going to be working on, have I set aside time to work on those things that I said I was going to work on that were that are going to lead me to my most important goals. Um, it allows you to say no to the other stuff. It allows you to put those other distractions aside. It allows you to not leave your inbox open all the time because you're saying, "Hey, I know because these are related to these actions are related to to my goals and what I said are most important. I'm going to focus there." And you won't be perfect because <laughs> there are the seven second coffee diets or whatever that <laughs> magic bullet is that, you know, that somebody's selling you a marketing secret, you know, we're going to get you the, the best leads ever, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. But it's, but it's staying true to the, staying true to the action because you, because you have it, because you know what it is, because you have the plan. Yeah. It's funny. That reminds me of uh, my, my wife and, and partner here, Trish, who, you know, very well, she 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 framed it this way. She said that shiny bullet, that shiny object that you're always chasing, that's just paying somebody else's mortgage. It's not paying ours. <laughs> and that kind of <laughs> hit with me because everybody has something to sell. So that silver bullet has to be sold by somebody. Um, so so another question, if I'm your you're coaching me, obviously you have for years. What would you tell one of our listeners or our listeners? The things not to do, we talked about the truest fan action plan, kind of focusing on the things you can control. Don't be reactionary, be actionary. But what are, let's just go with two things that you see. Maybe it's year to date. Maybe it's more general than that. Two things that will crash the second half of this year for those of us that, um, uh, choose not to pay attention or don't listen to this episode. Yeah. Well, I, I this might sound redundant, um, but part of our process is having a plan. And the, the first thing that is going to ensure that you won't have a great second half of the year is that you don't continue to follow your plan. So if you've gone through a planning process, you've mapped out what you want to accomplish during the course of the year, you've broken that down into the different time cycles that you focus on. We focus on, you know, three month sprints. Um, uh, if you, if you don't have a plan like that, or if you have one and you stop doing it, I, I can almost guarantee you that you won't accomplish all the things that you really want to accomplish. Sure. You could, you know, luck into a, a, uh, a, a, a good second half to the year, but they, to me, they always feel better when you say, you know, I, I did what I set out to do. In fact, I probably did more than I set out to do because I planned to do what I set out to do. So I think, I think that is, that's number one is to, to really think about make or not think about, but have that plan 
and and stick with it. Um, I was I was talking with the CEO of a pretty good sized um, advisory firm um, the other day, and um, in our conversation, um, one of the other things that we discovered, and I think this applies to your question, Phil, is keep doing the things that are working um, as human beings, or maybe as advisors in particular, we have this tendency to stop doing things that are working. And I can't tell you how many times I have begun a coaching relationship where somebody has expressly told me what their challenge is. I ask them what they have done in the past to overcome that challenge. And it was a really smart thing that they were doing. And I ask them why they stopped doing it. They can't tell me why they stopped doing it. I say, well, why don't we just start doing that again? Um, so have a plan, stick to your plan, and keep doing the things that are working. And there's a much greater likelihood of this year being the best year you ever had. That's so good. And while you were saying that, Rob, the only thing that came to my mind or the primary thing that came to my mind is we as advisors – Preach that same thing to our client families. Stay the course. You can't time the market. We're not getting in and out. Keep doing what always works. Why do advisors tell that to our clients, but they can't do it in their own business? That's, you know, I, I, entrepreneurs make this mistake over and over and over again. It's kind of like we don't, we, we want to encourage our clients to have the discipline to do the plan, stick with the plan, stay with your investment process. We're preaching that to them. And then we spin that around in our own business as leaders, firm owners, entrepreneurs, and we don't do it. Yeah. It's, it's, I guess it's like the, you know, the cobbler's, children don't have new shoes you know we <laughs> just right. we just we just don't we don't do it and um that's why um having check-in points um as part of your planning process is so important um when i interview um my clients um and ask them you know what are the two or three things that they get the greatest value out of in working with, in working with me, one of them is almost always accountability. Mm, um, that's, yeah. that's a big part of why, whether you work with us um, or somebody else, or you just have a mentor maybe inside of, if you work inside of a big, um, um, bigger organization where there are others around who can mentor you, it's, it's so important to have an accountability partner, somebody that can look at that plan with you and make sure you don't tell yourself little lies um, because that's, yeah. that's something else that can happen. I think in the planning process, you can say, well, I kind of am doing what I said I was doing. Well, there's, you're either doing what you said you're doing or you're not doing what you said you were going to do. There is no, I'm kind of doing it. Um, and so having accountability to really be able to look and say, you know, um, um, you set out to do this and you're doing an awesome job here, here, and here, but you've missed here. Um, why is that? Was that really not as important as you said it was? Um, and we just shouldn't have made it part of the plan or did you slip? And is that something that we need to redouble our efforts on and add back in as we move into the next, uh, the next phase of the year? That's 100% correct in so many areas of our lives. When you were talking about that accountability, um, those that know me know in uh, over the past decade, I've competed in a lot of endurance events, uh, specifically Ironman triathlons, and I'm kind of retired now, although I love to work out a lot. My former coach is going to be doing Ironman event in Lake Placid, New York, and he's asked me to be one of his accountability partners. He was my coach for, oh gosh, almost eight years. And now he's recognized as a coach that he needs the accountability. Uh, we're planning on going for a very long bike ride this weekend. Of course, I won't go as far as he has. And there's a chance of rain. And in our text message, our text string, he said, rain or shine, you need to make sure I stick with this 110 mile cycle, uh, this ride. And so 
that's the same thing, right? That's what you're talking about. It's having somebody alongside of you. Um, and that it could be any area of our life. The people that are successful, the people that overachieve, the people that are truly high performers always seem to have that commonality. They have a desire, they have a discipline, and they have a determination, but they also bring along somebody that can kind of whip them in shape, say, hey, Rob, why are you doing this? Why are you not communicating this way? Why are you deviating from your process? Why did you not ask your three clients for your, your three in, a, annual reviews this week? Why didn't you ask for referrals? We, we have a referral process. You didn't follow it. Um, and I think that if people will get back to that in the second half of this year, even if you are a high performer, you're going to have a lot more fun and you're going to have a lot more success. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's, that's one of the, the joys of actually working with um, successful people is they want to grow. I mean, I think that's a key component of someone who is successful is there's a desire to continue growing. And it may not always be in the same areas of their business or life, but there's that desire to keep growing. And, um, and I think that that's just, that's just really, really um, important. Yes, very important. Well, let's call it a, an episode. I well, hope actually, that Phil, this let, is. Let me interrupt yeah. you. I, I want to go I ahead to yes. add one more one more thing because you know we we do have um, this the pro, a planning process that we use with our clients, and there are certain tools that we use and we look at more regularly than others. But one of the other really important things that I like to do in the middle of the year is pull out your big dreams. Um, oh, yeah. We, we start our planning process um, in working with clients, helping them think years out into the future. What are the biggest dreams that our clients have for their businesses and their lives? And they can be um, hairy, audacious dreams and goals that seem impossible, but they're things that are really uh, important, that, that really feel important to them that um, they may not even know the exact steps that they're going to take to get there. They want to climb a mountain. They want to build a building for their favorite charity. They um, want to start a, a second business or whatever it might be. And they just have these big dreams. And so you can't look at your dreams every day, or you can, but you don't have to look at them every day. But at a time like this, when you're looking at where you are for the year, you should be able to say, okay, this is, I, I did my action items. I'm, I'm working hard on my, my sprint. Um, that's leading me towards the goals I set out to for the year. At this point, most of our clients are saying, gosh, we're actually ahead of where we thought we would be because of the action items. Then we're saying, okay, how does that relate back then to our, our big dreams? How does that re re relay, relay out to the future? And are you seeing clues in what you're doing and accomplishing that you're, you're like, gosh, that dream is getting clearer and clearer and closer and closer. And I can, I can, I can really feel the, the purpose behind uh, what I'm doing. So I'm not just, you know, knocking things out because I have to, I'm knocking things out because they're leading me towards my goals and towards my dreams. And so I think that's another vital piece of the, of the mid-year um, check in the mid-year uh, review that many of you might be doing right now. Yeah, that's it makes sense. It just reinforces the successes and builds upon it uh, kind of layer by layer. Uh, thanks for adding that in. So, um, you know, if you like this episode, please give us a like. If you have other advisors in the office, you know, other colleagues, send them our way. Send them to uh, their favorite podcast uh, platform and, and help us grow our community. We love the feedback. Please get in touch with us. Um, if you need a coach interview a coach. I can recommend one. His name's Rob Brown. <laughs> so <laughs> Rob, you know, <laughs> yeah, you go, you got to do that every now and then nobody else is gonna. So, uh, yeah, great to be having this conversation as we wrap up the first half of the year. And for all of you listening, we are as always rooting for your success. See you next time. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Purpose Focused Advisor. If you want to learn more, head over to our website, truestfancoaching.com. 
There you'll learn all about becoming a purpose-focused advisor. You'll also find today's show notes and links to the other gifts and resources we talked about during the episode. Again, thanks for listening. And remember, we're rooting for your success.